Hi there. Welcome to Agentic Fire. Can we use AI to write fire reliably? You know, um, just before I went to Hims, uh, my mother-in-law reached out to me and she wanted to schedule a dinner. Um, she wanted to know when my son Brennan would be back from school for spring break so that we could all get together. Uh, I didn't know. Um, but I wanted to know was his girlfriend invited, and she said, of course. So I did what any uh, parent today would do. I took a screenshot of this, and I sent it on um, to uh, my son, and I asked him uh, if he'd be available on either the first or the second um, for uh, dinner. Um, and he sent back to me uh, that he's not a brand of cereal. You know, uh, I had mistyped his name here, Bran. You know, I, this is a minor mistake. I, I suspect my son will forgive me for this. And um, actually, we did have a very good dinner before I headed off to Hims. Um, but this is an example from a, a, a presentation um, at a conference that I will not name from a presenter who I will not name, who is very proud about getting up and talking about using AI to create uh, fire resources. And he'd asked the AI to create this diagnostic report um, on a chest x-ray. Uh, and it had done a great job of coming up with a code. And the code there um, has display name of chest x-ray, right? That's great. Um, but uh, when you look at this code that it actually chose, it chose the code of rubella, right? And this is a common thing that, uh, that we see in AI, which we call hallucinations, right? Um, the AI doesn't know actually what the context is. It's just doing the best job it can at coming up with something that's a SNOMED code, and it happens to be a valid SNOMED code. Uh, it's just not right in that context. But you know, seeing this uh, made me think about, okay, is there a way we can do this better? Uh, and with a new agentic technology, I do think there is a possibility. So here, I'm gonna run you through a really quick demo um, of what I came up with. Um, you're gonna see on the left-hand side here what the doctor is gonna interact with. And on the uh, right-hand side, you're gonna be looking at what the agents are doing uh, in the background on the doctor's behalf. And then I'm gonna come back and we'll, we'll break all this down uh, and go through it bit by bit. So don't worry if you don't follow everything right away. But first he's gonna say, I want a script for 500 milligrams for Jill, okay? So then his agent on his behalf is going to plan out what to do. It's going to get some information about Jill. It's going to ask the medication agent to write the medication request. And the medication agent is going to ask the checker to check that request, which is going to show it um, some things that might be wrong in that request and ask it to make those fixes, right? And then it's going to make those fixes and check again in case it's hallucinated another time. Finally, it's going to send all of that information back to the doctor uh, as a well-formed medication request. Now, we can, of course, envision that in a real system, we wouldn't be presenting Jason to the doctor, um, but this is, a, this is just a demo here. Um, the, but the doctor can then verify it and have it sent off uh, to the pharmacy. So what you've seen here is a set of agents all interacting with each other and interacting with tools. So for example, the patient agent, which is Jill in this case with the patient, right? It's interacting with a fire repository that has the fire resources about Jill. And our medication and medication checker are um, interacting with the RxNav API, which is how you look up RxNorm, which is how we code medications uh, in the US. And each of these is what I call a macro agent. They're made up of a bunch of micro agents. Uh, one agent is the planner agent, which is what figures out what the agent should do. And then there are a set of executor agents that execute that plan. And finally, a responder agent, which summarizes all of that up and communicates it back either to the user or to the other agents that it's uh, talking to. I think it's also important to remember that while we, we typically think of uh, 
generative AI and agents interacting with chatbots, they don't have to just interact with chatbots. They can also get input from uh, sensors and cameras and other agents. Um, but at its core, each of these agents is made up of several different pieces. We have the LLM at the center, the large language model at the center, uh, and it has an internal memory. And the internal memory is everything that that LLM was trained on initially, right? Um, the only interaction between the LLM and the outside world comes in through the prompt, right? And the prompt has three parts to it. It has the system prompt, which is kind of the instructions to the LLM, uh, which might include some information about tools the LLM can call. It has the current context, which is the current conversation that it's either having with the user or with another agent, right? Um, and then it's got some more general context. And this is where we uh, retrieval augmented generation comes in, where we have external memory sources that have more up-to-date information than the internal memory of the LLM that we might want to combine with the current context and the system prompt in order to um, have the LLM have access to the most up-to-date information possible. And as I remember what comes in with that system prompt is those tools. The tools are the things which the agent might want to be able to call. And this we're showing an example of maybe getting a weather report or perhaps the uh, directions to a, a location. Or in our example that we looked at, uh, looking up data in a fire store or looking up the RX uh, norm codes. All right, so now that we understand kind of the technology that's going on underneath here, let's dive a little bit deeper and, and take it a little bit slower and look at what's actually happening here. Okay, so first we are going to ask the agent to write this script. So um, what we've seen here is first that that practitioner agent made a plan of what it needed to do. It needed to get um, Jill's full name and ID, and it did that by reaching out to the patient agent. And then it knew that what it needed to do was go and call the medication uh, request agent. You'll notice these are my agents tend to be uh, named after fire resources because uh, that's the nomenclature that I, I think is easy to, to use. And that asked it to go down to the medication agent. The medication agent um, then is doing its own plan about what to do. Right. So we've seen now these agents interact with each other. Um, in order to get to a point where we're now ready to write that medication request. So let's take a look at what happens when we write that medication request. So the it, first thing it does is it goes and it looks up the Rx norm code, and then it writes a medication request. Um, that seems all fine and good, right? Uh, but if we look at this medication request, there's actually a couple of flaws in it. Uh, one is that this is the Rx norm code that it came up with, and it did come up with a valid Rx norm code. It actually got close in that uh, that is an Rx norm code for metformin, but it is an Rx code for metformin, not metformin 500 milligram oral tablet, which is what the display is, right? So that doesn't match. Also, if we're looking closely, that practitioner ID it made up that practitioner ID. That's a complete hallucination. It knew that it needed to add a practitioner ID, but it didn't know what the right one was. So now what it's going to do is it's going to actually send it send this JSON medication request over to the medication checker agent. Uh, and the medication checker agent is going to check that Rx norm code. It's going to check the various IDs and make sure that they make sense. When it reaches out, for example, to the practitioner ID, the practitioner is going to say, that, that ID, I don't have no idea what that is. And so what's going to come back with is, no, the practitioner ID doesn't exist. Um, and it's also going to say that the Rx norm code does not match the display value. Okay. And so that's going to tell the medication agent that the last plan failed and please try again. So it's going to give it another try. It's going to plan out, and this time it's going to know what it did wrong. So it's going to get the practitioner ID, and it's going to look up the right Rx norm code for the right thing. 
So that happens. And we can now see that we got the right RX norm code for metformin 500 milligram talcum. Now it is going to send that back to the checker agent uh, because we want to make sure that it didn't hallucinate something else while it was updating that uh, medication request. Now, um, what I found is generally once, twice back and forth, it actually does pretty well. Um, what I would set up to do is try uh, five times back and forth. Um, and then if it gets it, it's still wrong, it's going to uh, error out. Right. Um, but now we can see that we get a well-formed medication request with, in fact, both the right uh, code for the metformin and the right practitioner ID uh, for um, the practitioner who's uh, requesting this medication. Um, we could also check many other elements of this. So what you've now seen is a set of agents using LLMs, working with each other uh, to generate a script on behalf of the doctor. And as I said, you know, we could, we could present this script in a real system. We wouldn't present it necessarily as just JSON blob. Um, we would present it in a much nicer UI. Um, this is here for demonstration purposes so that you can see that it's actually writing the proper JSON underneath. So uh, one other element that I just wanted to let you know about, you know, obviously we're creating this fire resource. There's nothing in this fire resource right now uh, that gives you any indication that it came from a, an agent or an LLM, right? Um, I think that that's a potential uh, real problem for the future. I mean, certainly the practitioner is verifying it. So we still have a human in the loop, but we really should have some way of knowing. and. Uh, HL7 has just launched a new project called AI Transparency on Fire, uh, which uh, was just approved right before him started. So we're just getting started with that project. I'm a code lead along with uh, with May from uh, MITRE, um, and we have a, we're working under the auspices of the EHR working group. Um, but we also have uh, several co-sponsors, including Security and uh, CQI and um, uh, CDS, um, and then a number of interested parties. And we'd love for you to reach out and, uh, and be involved. Uh, that's a link to the PSS and a link to our Confluence page. So thank you very much. Uh, my name is Sam Schiffman. I'm actually the innovation architect at a company called Vantic. Um, all the demos that I showed you today were actually um, developed and deployed on the Vantic platform, which is a platform for creating and operating intelligent solutions at scale uh, that is amazingly um, good at doing agentic uh, workflows. Um, some of you may also know me from HealthForge Consulting uh, LLC, and so that's up there so that you can uh, you can reach out to me either way. Uh, love to hear more um, and continue the conversation. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day.